Hey y'all, Coach Jennifer here. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how our families are broken up, how Satan breaks up our families, how the enemy uses tools to break up our families. We're going to be talking about one specific tool that is used by the enemy in this video. That one is pagan holidays and how they have an effect on our relationships with each other and our relationship with our Abba, our Father in Heaven. Abba Shemaim, Karawash, Shin, Yahweh So we're looking here at the second book of Hermas called His Commands. This is Command 4. Or the command that's talking about the putting away of a wife for adultery. And we shouldn't only think about adultery as in um, uh, um, woman and another man. We should also think of adultery as in us as the bride of the Most High and our relationship to our husband, who is our Messiah. I don't know if I got that right. So let's just go on down here. First one says, furthermore said he, I command thee that thou keep thyself chaste and that thou suffer not any thought of any other marriage or of fornication to enter into thy heart for such a thought produces great sin. Now we need to break out these words and treat them like they're completely different. Like for instance, marriage is what we think of when we think of adultery in the three dimensional but when we think of adultery in the five dimensional, now it's more dealing with fornication because you're talking about other stuff like pagan holidays, um, any form of idolatry or anything that breaks the law for that matter. Verse two says, but be thou at all times mindful of the Lord and thou shalt never sin. For if such an evil thought should arise in thine heart, thou shouldest be guilty of a great sin. But they who do such things follow the way of death. Okay, so when we're talking about adultery or fornication, as to say, well, it's talking about both. We have to keep the thought out of our mind. And it's real easy to think about that when we're thinking about three dimensional stuff because it's a woman and we learned a long time ago, you know, not to be gawking at women, such as such. But when you're thinking about five dimensional, sometimes we don't know that something is wrong, you know, especially if you're dealing with like something like a pagan holiday or a meal or a gift or um, something that we haven't been taught that we should avoid. Um, we could be messing with, I say, fornicating with something that we're not supposed to be. Verse three, look therefore to thyself and keep thyself from such a thought. For where chastity remains in the heart of a righteous man, there an evil thought ought never to arise. So it depends on your state anyway as to which kind of thoughts you will get and the level of wickedness. You know, for one person, a high level of wickedness is not reading the Bible so many hours a day, while another person's wickedness, you can imagine, could be way, way worse that they, you know, things that they're thinking about doing. But either the case, whichever one you're thinking about in a favorable manner, like, you know, I wish I, you know, didn't have to study so much. Well, it's going to wake them. It's going to make a way for you. And I mean, it, I mean, the Elohim are going to make a way for you not to study so much if that's what you so desire. Or if your desire is worse than that, then it's going to give you what you want, in other words. So it's important not to think on any things and to re repent if and when you do really repent um, if you have a bad thought. It says, and I said unto him, Sir, suffer me to speak a little to you. He bade me say on, and I answered, Sir, if a man that is faithful in the Lord should have a wife and shall catch her in adultery, does a man sin that continues to live with her? So now I'm trying to broaden the scope. I'm trying to broaden the scope on what's being talked about or what I should say is being understood because I believe what's being talked about is a broader scope. Um, 
definitely going to widen up here in a verse or two. But if we think about this adultery and this fornication on this fifth dimensional level, now it's not only about the woman cheating on the man, but it's also about the man cheating on his bride, the bride uh, cheating on the husband. So the woman, I mean, and the man can participate in that in different kinds of ways, too. He can fornicate, too. So Hermes has this question. If a man that is faithful in the Lord, so you have one partner who is faithful, and shall have a wife, and shall catch her in adultery. Now notice that part. He says, shall catch her in adultery. Thus a man sins that continues to live with her. Now these are some real important um, words here. Because that's what he talks about next. He says in verse five, and he said unto me, as long as he is ignorant of her sin, he commits no fault in living with her. But if a man shall know his wife to have offended and she shall not repent of her sin, but go on still in her fornication and a man shall continue nevertheless to live with her, he shall become guilty of her sin and partake with her in her adultery. So this is deep, guys, when we're thinking about sin, because this is how your families get broken up. And I'm going to tell you now, it's not a choice here. He's not saying that the man necessarily has to kick his wife out of the house or kick her husband out of the house. I'll read it again. But from empirical evidence and what I've seen going on, it just happens. He says, as long as he is ignorant of her sin. So if he is ignorant of it, maybe even if she is ignorant of it, I don't want to read into the lines. I'll read between the lines, but I, I'll have to make sure I see that, um, that as long as she's ignorant, but it's saying as long as he is ignorant. So you have the wife. Um, let's, I don't want to speak gorily, but if we think it's five dimensionally. So you have the wife. She has not necessarily committed a adultery. She's committed fornication, like maybe she just rode in the guy's car or something like that. If the husband doesn't know about it, he and is ignorant about it, he's not guilty of what she's doing. But let's say he does know about it, that he's know that he knows that she is doing this. Now he is actually partaking in it with her. He's guilty of it as long as she lives in the house with him. He says, and he commits no fault in living with her. But if a man shall know his wife have offended. So once you know she has done wrong and shall not repent of her sin, she's done wrong and she's not repentant. Now that's key too, because we all make mistakes. But if we're not repentant of the mistake, but go on still in her fornication and a man shall continue nevertheless to live with her. He shall become guilty of her sin and partake with her in her adultery. So the, they have to break up. The family has this is how they destroy your family is by having the pagan holidays or having the pagan holiday food. We understand from this verse that once this happens and it's not just the pagan holiday, we go to the next verse. And he said unto him, what therefore is it to be done if the woman continues in her sin? He answered, let her husband put her away and let him continue by himself. But if he shall put his wife away and marry another, he also does commit adultery. Now, this is a key part in the understanding of this is that it's can't just run off and find another woman during this time. We'll find out why. But what's happened is she sinned and the marriage has entered this state right here where it can't stay together until this part right here in verse five is fixed. He says that they have to live apart. So what happens if she's not repented or what happens if she continued to do so? It says he answered, let her husband put her away and continue by himself. Verse seven says, and I said, what if the woman that is so put away shall repent and be willing to return to her husband? Shall she not be received by him? He said unto me, yes, 
If her husband shall not receive her, he will sin and commit a great offense against himself. But he ought to receive the offender if she repents, only not often. See, this is the reason why he can't remarry again and why he commits adultery if he remarries again, because his wife is in this state and she's already um, done this thing, but she has the opportunity to repent unless he remarries. If he remarries, she can't repent. She can't move back into the house with another woman and says, you know, y'all break up this marriage y'all got going on because I've repented. Her chances of a full repentance are gone because her husband is gone. So the man has to remain single and by himself until she actually um, repents. Because if he doesn't, then he commits, what does it say? Does it say a greater offense? No, it just says a great offense. For to the servant of God, there is but one repentance. And for this cause, a man that putteth away his wife ought not to take another, because she may repent. She may repent, so he has to stay single. This act is alike both in the man and the woman. Now, and so some is wondering about this. They're like, wow, she get to do all that. But you have to remember, we're talking more so spiritually now than we are talking three dimensionally. I mean, if, if we really think that that's what our wives want to do, then, you know, this, this conversation is really coming off high minded because we're thinking of ourselves as brides and he's using this kind of three dimensional analogy to make us understand, which is perfect because when our wife goes off or even thinks about going off, it brings up this spirit of jealousy, which we hear about all through the Bible. When we hear that our God is a jealous God is saying that when we break his commandments and break his rules or anything like that, it will stir up the spirit of jealousy and this spirit of jealousy, it, it, it affects our spirit, our emotions and our hormones, especially for our women folk. And look at this part in verse nine, which makes the connection. I know there's some that's having a hard time thinking of anything besides adultery. But when you start thinking about other ways we may offend our father and stare at the spirit of jealousy, it could really be concerning. Like, and, and you should bring to light that in verse nine, which says this act is alike both in the man and in the woman. Now, they that commit adultery, not only who pollute the flesh, but who also make an image. If therefore a woman perseveres in anything of this kind and repents not, depart from her and live not with her. Otherwise, thou also shall be partaker in her sin. So this is a breakup of the family, no matter whether you want to be there, whether you think it's a good idea, whether you want to save your marriage or not, you're still going to have to be separated. Even if you're so, especially, I'm going to say, especially if you want to save your marriage, yeah, you're going to have to do exactly what this verse or this chapter says, because otherwise you too will be partaker of her sin and you won't recover. Not with both of y'all in that case. As long as one of you guys are outside of the boat, you can help save the other. But if both of you are drowning, you're not going to be much help to each other. Verse 10 says, But it is therefore commanded that both men and women should remain unmarried because such persons may repent. Again, he's saying it's both men and a woman. So if the man has committed adultery, then again, or in any manner, fornication, there's going to be a breakup in the house. So notice that part where he says right there, or anything of the like. So there's any commandment that we that we break. And see, the thing about the pagan holidays, those are intrusive. You would have a hard time going to some family's house and convincing the man or the woman to commit adultery or even fornication. Unless, of course, the fornication is unknown to them, like pagan food or a pagan celebration or anything that would be offensive or would stir up the spirit of jealousy. So that's what they're doing to us. They're stirring up the spirit of jealousy by doing these things, which is written clearly in the Bible. 
All you got to look up is the word jealousy, and you could probably make a whole list of things that could stir up the spirit, including taking images like we see here or committing adultery and stir up the spirit. But also pagan holidays will stir up the spirit. So that's what they're doing in order to destroy our families. They just come in with some hot dog wings and some ketchup and some mustard and some potato chips. During certain times of the year, they have about 13 of these days throughout the year. So they're hard to miss, including birthdays. So that's why we can't stand on our feet. That's how they're taking our power from us. Anytime you think things are going good, well, they don't have to worry because there's another pagan holiday coming. And it's the spirit of the matter. You know, you sitting around on Friday and somebody starts talking about what you're going to do this weekend. And you're like, what weekend? It's a three-day weekend because we got a holiday coming up. And it's like, Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, what am I going to do? Hey, baby, what are we going to do this weekend? Get extra days off. And so you end up celebrating these pagan holidays. And then when you come back to work Tuesday morning, you're powerless. That's how the governments are keeping control of the people because they're taking away their spiritual power through these adulteries. That's why it's free to make YouTube videos, but you have to pay money to make blogs on the radio because taking an image, making an image takes our power away. So what do you think about all that stuff? Well, I think that um, the um, I think we've been shown evidence of how important it is um, just to stay away from them. Um, I think that's my lesson and my take out of it. Just uh, when you, um, you always have a perception of the season that we're in. Try to um, limit some of the things that you're participating in as far as maybe like going to the store. You know, you could probably do your shopping more so over the internet uh, because you, you're you walking into something that um, even though you're not a uh, um, willing participant in it uh, some kind of way it always seems to grab you in yeah, and we, so um, and we talked about the families more so in this video mm, about how um, how it affects the family and how yeah the separation come and like you were saying about even though you know you might not know that those spirits are um, or you might not willingly participate in it once again those spirits still come in and then therefore you're bringing it back to the family and the whole family is being um, set in disarray so. yeah. and then the other families participation are the families that are outside and their involvement we talked about that mm -hmm. how they're being kind of used in all of this. Yeah, one thing that, you know, you said yesterday, I think it was about how, and then I go back to the scripture that I was studying about how, I think it's in Ephesians, how it talks about it's not the person that we're wrestling against, mm -hmm. you know, that our battle mm -hmm. is That's against, it. but it's actually the spirits that are so much higher and so have so much more knowledge and can, can perceive the unknown and the things that we're about to do just by our thoughts and the actions that we've done previously. Um, they are the ones that we're fighting against. And it's hard to fight against something that you can't see, something that's invisible. So you have to always be aware uh, of what's going on. So let's close out with what we need to do about this. Obviously, repentance is involved. Mm -hmm. But for the sake of time, let's jump down, if you would, to this section of Hermes and read what he says about how baptism plays a part in it. You can start right there um, where he starts asking more questions. Sir, say I from certain teachers that there is no other repentance save that which took place when we went down into the water and obtained remission of our former sins. Yeah, so that's saying that you only had one shot in getting baptized. And so you don't really have a chance when she's messed up. So he's questioning him. He said to me, thou hast well heard, for so it is. For he that hath received remission of sins ought no longer to sin, but to dwell in purity. 
Mm -hmm. So That's he's saying, yeah, it's true. But, you know, so a lot of people may be broken hearted if they don't read further or understand this because he's saying that, um, well, go ahead. He says it clearly. But since thou inquires all things accurately, I will declare unto thee this also, so as to give no excuse to those who shall hereafter believe, or those who have already believed on the Lord. For they that have already believed, or shall hereby believe, have one repentance for sin, but only have remission of their former sins. Yeah. So you only get remission like like or it, they wiped away like the first time like it never happened before but we're all still sinful and so now we get repentance we get forgiveness of our sins right, right? they still count we still gotta make you know restitution but we get forgiveness right where one could argue the other one you don't have to make restitution everything's forgotten about right so we wanted to add that in um, because that'll be part of the cleansing process as we recover repentance and baptism according to what we read. Mm -hmm. So, any more thoughts before we close out? You want to go ahead and close out the video? You missed most of it, but... Well, if you guys got anything out of this video, um, give us a thumbs up or like. And if you didn't get anything out of the video, of course, um, give us a thumbs down for dislike. But we really do hope that you receive some understanding. Um, and we will see you in the comments below. And shalom. Shalom.